Welcome to my presentation on Manitoba Grain Elevators. Thanks for taking the time to view my presentation. My name is Steve Boyko. You can find me on the web at www.traingeek.ca or on my main blog, blog.traingeek.ca, where I've been blogging since 2005. You can also view more about Manitoba's grain elevators at manitobagrainelevators.ca. And you can also find me on Google+, Facebook, YouTube, Flickr, 500px, and probably some other places I can't think of. So why grain elevators? Why not? I grew up mostly on the east coast of Canada, so grain elevators were not natural to me. But when I moved out to Manitoba in 2009, I really began to notice these grain elevators, and I wanted to take pictures of them. So I've been traveling around taking pictures of grain elevators, and I'm happy to share it with you now. So what is a grain elevator? At its most basic level, a grain elevator is a storage device for grain. It elevates the grain above ground level and stores it in vertical bins. It, the uh, reason why it elevates it is that it can use gravity to let the grain flow down either into a waiting rail car or into a truck for delivery to another location. Grain elevators often can have uh, auxiliary functions such as uh, cleaning the grain or drying the grain. And most grain elevators have annexes or bins added to them for additional storage. I should point out that I'm talking about country elevators located in the prairies. Terminal elevators are grain elevators that receive grain from country elevators and transfer them to ships for shipment overseas. Uh, there are also farm elevators which are located on spe specific farms and not for general use. Here we have a diagram showing the internals of a typical country elevator. The grain would be delivered through the driveway at location one by a, a truck, which would then dump it through a grate in the floor down into the pit, area two. The elevating conveyor would lift it, number three, would lift it up to the top of the grain elevator, number four, where it would flow through the distributor. The distributor basically selects which bin it goes into, and through the bin spouts it goes down into one of the, one of the storage bins, area nine. When it's ready to be shipped again, via rail car or out via truck, what will happen is that the bottom of the bin will be opened. The grain will flow down into the mixer, number 10, into the back hopper, 11, in, in, into the pit. Then it will be elevated again to the top to the distributor, but this time the distributor would either select it, would be selected to take the grain out and let it flow out to the rail car or to a truck in the driveway. There are also auxiliary functions, as you can see here, like a grain cleaner, where the grain could be dispensed from a bin into the into the grain cleaner then back into the bin again. But you can see that the grain can be circulated again and again through the very simple mechanism of dumping it into the pit and then elevating it back up to the top to the distributor. The picture on the left shows the Dugall grain elevator which is a typical country elevator with some bins on one side and an annex on the other. When grain elevators were first built farmers would bring them in via wagons but nowadays they are brought via grain trucks. They're brought into the driveway and dumped. The truck drives into the driveway and stops. It is weighed full and then the truck dumps the grain through the grate in the floor. The truck is then weighed again to, to get the tear or empty weight and the difference is the amount of grain that was, that was dumped into the pit. Here are several different selector wheels. These wheels are used to turn the distributor to select which bin the grain will flow into once it's elevated up to the top of the elevator. There are different styles of selector wheels, but they all do basically the same thing. There is a clutch on the floor that basically disengages the distributor and raises it slightly so that when they turn the wheel, the distributor at the top will turn as well. And then once the, the elevator agent releases the clutch, the distributor drops down and is locked into place. Here's a view inside the elevating leg of a grain elevator. It's basically a conveyor with plastic cups that are attached to it. The cups go up on one side and down on the other so that they can scoop the grain up from the pit at the bottom and elevate it to the top where they dump it. The, the, the belt moves quite fast so it's advisable to keep your fingers out of the way and normally it is closed and not accessible to people. Rail cars are loaded via a movable spout. When the rail car is spotted underneath these doors the movable spout will be positioned at each of the hatches on the top of the rail car and the grain would be allowed to flow into the rail car. However, it is weighed in the grain elevator itself prior to loading into the car so that the agent can have an accurate measure of how much grain was put into each rail car. 
Green elevators have offices where the paperwork is done. It also houses the motor that drives the elevating leg for the elevator. Originally, this motor was a gasoline-powered motor, so the office was separate from the grain elevator to pr reduce the fire risk in case the, motor, the engine caught on fire. However, modern elevators use electric motors, so the office is typically integrated with the rest of the elevator. Elevator agents would often do other business besides grain. They would sell fertilizer, baling twine, and so forth. So that kind of business would also be done through the office. Elevators often had annexes added to them for additional grain storage. Modern grain elevators usually use steel bins instead of annexes because they are cheaper and easier to construct. Grain elevators often had outbuildings to store the flammable components such as fertilizer. This particular grain elevator was a Manitoba pool elevator and the Manitoba pool stored the chemicals and fertilizer in the outbuilding seen here. The earliest Canadian grain elevator was this elevator built in Niverville, Manitoba, south of Winnipeg in 1878. You can see that it was a round elevator, unlike the more familiar square elevators. Now I'm going to talk about some of the early grain elevator companies. Many of the early grain elevator companies were flour mill companies, such as Ogilvy. Here you can see a map from dated 1920 showing where the Ogilvy flour mill elevators were across the prairies. You can see many of them were in Manitoba. I've seen two Ogilvy grain elevators in Manitoba. The first is in Kalita. You can see the Ogilvy Oats showing through the pool logo. And the other one was in Nipinka. This shows that elevators often changed hands several times during the life of the elevator when one company was merged into another company. In many cases, the Manitoba Pool bought elevators from other companies and made them Pool B or Pool C elevators, secondary elevators. Another early grain elevator company was the Lake of the Woods Milling Company. One of the founders of the Lake of the Woods Milling Company was George Stevens of CPR fame. Here are two Lake of the Woods elevators still surviving in Manitoba. The one in Cameron is basically in the middle of a field. The one in Elva is reputed to be the oldest remaining grain elevator in the prairies, built perhaps in 1890 or thereabouts. There is some talk that it has been re rebuilt since then, but records are incomplete. McCabe is another early grain elevator company. This was an American company that set up elevators throughout the prairies. There are two elevators that I am aware of that show the McCabe logo in Manitoba. One is in Brandon, the only grain elevator remaining in Brandon. The other one is in Morden. The Morden one is interesting because it shows the progression of companies that owned it. You can see the McCabe at the top. The Victoria brand was a brand of McCabe. But more prominent is the UGG logo that shows that the elevator was taken over by the United Grain Growers Company. Later grain elevator companies included Manitoba Pool, certainly the largest, and it was a farmer-owned grain elevator company, just like the Saskatchewan Wheat Pool and the Alberta Wheat Pool. Other grain elevator companies included Federal, Pioneer, Patterson, UGG, Parrish and Heimbecker, and Agricor, which was a successor to the Manitoba Pool. Today's grain elevator companies in Manitoba include Viterra, a successor to the Manitoba Pool, Patterson Grain, the Canadian Wheat Board, Delmar Commodities, Pioneer, Parrish and Heimbecker, and Cargill. Here's a question for you. How many grain elevators do you think remain in Manitoba? I'm including concrete elevators in, in this as well as the wooden ones. I'll give you a hint. In 1911, there were 707 grain elevators in Manitoba. Any guesses? I believe there are about 190 grain elevators remaining in Manitoba. To date, I've photographed 143, and I hope to get the rest next year in 2015. Thanks for watching my presentation. You can reach me on the web at traingeek.ca, manitobagrainelevators.ca, or you can email me at steve at Thanks again.